What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize the finals for the maximum FPS possible, as well as visibility. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. So in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as anything else that may help you get better FPS. This video is purely focusing on the in-game options. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, this game is pretty well optimized, especially if you have an RTX graphics card with some sort of array tracing support, it seems to be running really smoothly with barely any FPS drops on higher end hardware, but there's still a ton to be gained by optimizing some of the options. On the main menu, I'll turn off my overlay there, head into the settings in the top right corner, then settings and video. Let's start at the very top with display and resolution. First of all, windowed mode should be set to full screen for the best possible FPS, but windowed borderless or windowed full screen rather does seem to run pretty well, especially on Windows 11 with windowed mode optimizations enabled in the graphics options of Windows, but preferably you should be running it full screen for the best unfiltered raw performance. On top of this, resolution should match your display, so if you have a 2K display, set it to 2K, 1080, 1080, etc. We'll be lowering resolution later on and upscaling using DLSS, FSR, or things like that, but we'll get there in just a moment. Then VSync should be disabled unless you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, this should definitely be turned on. If you're CPU limited with a much lower end CPU, you should set this to on plus boost. For me, as I have a powerful graphics card and CPU, I'll just leave it on on. Then resolution scaling method, we have DLSS, AMD FSR2, Intel XCSS, and TAAU. Let's go through these options. DLSS, FSR2, and XCSS are all AI upscaling or just upscaling that your graphics card does. NVIDIA DLSS is specific to NVIDIA graphics cards, but AMD FSR2 can be used by any graphics card. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, you should use DLSS. If you have anything else or just prefer how AMD FSR looks, choose that instead. Then right below this, we have an option. This option allows us to change between quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance between all of these upscaling slash resolution scaling options. Essentially, the more to the performance side you push this, the lower quality the game is rendered and AI magic is used to upscale it. If you have the set too far to performance end, you'll gain a ton of FPS, sure, but you'll start noticing weird visual artifacts and glitches. You won't get this closer to the quality side, so I'd recommend you start at quality and move your way to the performance side if you really need performance out of the game. Quality will give you the best visuals in game, allowing you to see the furthest. If you don't want any any kind of upscaling, you can use DLAA instead, which just uses AI at your base resolution to smooth out aliased edges. Those are those jagged slash blocky edges. This does require an RTX graphics card, however. If we push across to FSR, we only have quality options, and the same goes for XESS. DLAA, which is anti-aliasing, is specific for NVIDIA graphics cards. Then TAAU. This is the Unreal Engine built-in upscaler. It's not as magical as DLSS or AMD FSR, but you may get good results from this as well. Personally, I prefer a DLSS or FSR2, and I'll be starting on DLAA. I won't be doing any upscaling just so we can see what kind of performance we're getting. If we need more FPS later, we can push this further to the right to the performance end, starting at quality. So for now, DLAA. Then graphics. These are your preference entirely. Field of view, set this to whatever you're comfortable with. The higher this is, the lower FPS you'll get technically, but it really doesn't matter. It all depends on your personal experience. Then motion blur. I usually have this disabled and I'd recommend you have this disabled too as it'll help you see people moving around in the distance a lot easier especially if you're flicking around it's important to have this disabled as a competitive edge then lens distortion also somewhat a competitive edge if you turn this off but ultimately it's not that distracting it's just a nice small touch to add a bit more to the game you can leave this enabled but it's your preference then ray tracing if you have an Nvidia RTX graphics card ray tracing will usually be set on high dynamic there are a few few options here. We have dynamic, epic, high, medium, and low, and static. One of these options, well, essentially, you'll start on dynamic high with higher-end RTX graphics cards, and it'll dynamically use RTX slash ray tracing, lighting, etc. as you move around the world. You can see on the right-hand side what each of these means. Epic has the most performance impact, so you preferably play on high at highest as this is a competitive game. Personally, playing with RTX on high and everything on Epic with a 3080 Ti sat me comfortably at around 70-ish FPS, which is actually really good for 
an RTX game. Usually RTX absolutely tanks performance. And that being said, if you set this to static instead, there'll be no ray tracing at all really, except for the pre-baked ones, so you'll have a very tiny performance impact. If you need more FPS and you want a competitive edge, set this to static. Otherwise, you can choose the lower RTX options if you'd like better lighting, etc. Personally, I'll leave this on static for now, but I did play with high options and it really did look pretty good. So, static for performance. Then, scrolling down to quality. There's only a handful of options here, which makes it super simple. Overall, quality level changes all of the options below this point, and essentially, moving down an option will gain you maybe 20-ish percent FPS, so it's a really balanced quality level picker. Starting at Epic, I had around 60-ish FPS, then high 75, medium, all the way up to pretty much 100, and low even more. Personally, I'd start wherever your graphics card is. If you know it's a higher-end GPU, set it to high. If it's a super low-end GPU, start at low and work your way up. I'll leave this at high for now. It just changes all the options below it. View distance is somewhat your preference. The higher this is, the more you can see in the distance. Pushing this to Epic isn't really necessary. High is good enough, and you'll probably want it higher so you can see people better in the distance. If you're struggling for FPS, lower this to medium, but I wouldn't recommend going lower. Then anti-aliasing. If you're using DLAA or any kind of upscaling, whether it's FSR2, DLSS, or XESS, you should definitely set anti-aliasing all the way down to low. Essentially, this smooths out jagged edges, and in a game that you need performance in, a competitive game, it's definitely not something you want taking away FPS. You'd rather have jagged edges over having way fewer FPS. Set this down to low, especially if you're using any kind of upscaling. Then shadows. You're not going to be staring at shadows all the time. I'd recommend medium at highest, otherwise you can push it up if you find shadows distracting. Then post-processing. This has to do with motion blur, bloom, lens flares, etc. You're not going to be seeing these effects all the time, so leaving it on high is probably okay, especially if you have motion blur disabled. So medium is probably good enough, but you can crank it higher if you need. Texture. This one entirely depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. If you have more than 8 gigs of VRAM in your system, you can comfortably set this to epic and forget about it. Leave it on high if you have 6 or more gigs of VRAM, medium if you have 4 or more, and anything less than that, set it down to low. Essentially, if you use more VRAM, it's not going to take away any FPS for the most part. If you use too much VRAM, as in you overflow your graphics card, the game will probably crash or absolutely tank its FPS. If you have this option set too low, you're not really going to gain anything. So, there's a sweet spot for your graphics card that's worthwhile finding out. Usually, you can have this on the higher end and not really worry about performance at all. Epic may be pushing it too far if you don't have a 4K display, so high is definitely more than good enough. Then effects. This has to do with screen space reflection, subsurface scattering, sky atmosphere, and ambient occlusion. These are all somewhat noticeable, but they aren't going to be gameplay breaking if you lower this down quite heavily. These are very subtle effects that you're not going to be looking at all the time. Low or medium is probably okay. Then foliage. You're not going to be staring at trees and things like that all the time. You can comfortably crank this all the way down to low. There's not much heavy grass, so having this set to a lower option isn't necessarily going to help you get a competitive advantage, but lower foliage usually means better visibility. Then, global illumination resolution. This has to do with lighting all over the world, and it's baked into the map. Ultimately, this isn't going to have a huge impact on your graphics card. It's mainly going to have an impact on your VRAM and a little bit of performance. Having this set to high or medium is probably okay. For the most part, that's all the options here. There's not much else we need to worry about. Scrolling down, these are all of my settings here, and if we need more FPS, come back to the upscaling method and push it to quality, then balance, and that's pretty much as far as I would go to the right, otherwise you'll start noticing some really weird graphics, artifacts, and glitches. I'll head across to the audio tab, where you can lower your dialogue volume, as this will help you hear footsteps and things like that as the announcer shouts at you. It's not necessarily super important, but it could be a small competitive advantage. The same goes for music over here. SFX volume, I definitely leave all the way up, as that's footsteps and things like that. The rest of these options are entirely your preference, accessibility as well. And on gameplay, the only thing I'd recommend changing is your matchmaking region, just to make sure you're in the correct place. Obviously, it's going to find the best ping server and drop you in that, so it doesn't really matter after all. Crossplay is something you can enable if you're struggling to find matches, as it should greatly improve the number of players that you could be matched up against or with. Having this enabled should help lower your queue times. That's it. I'll head back and, with all of our optimized settings, I'll head play, head into a quick play game, 
and check out our FPS. And there's just a reminder that you have crossplay enabled, but that's fine. There we go. On the menu, we're sitting comfortably at 144-ish FPS, which is great previously in-game, as you probably saw near the beginning of the video, or even overlaid now, my FPS before with the epic option was around 70, quite stable, dropping to 60s, even 50s sometimes, but it wasn't bad at all. This game is super well optimized as the Unreal Engine is just good. Right, in the intro here, 150 FPS and dropping into the actual game itself, 160. This is huge. I've quite literally doubled my FPS with these options and the game looks pretty much just as good. The most hard-hitting FPS option you'll probably see will most likely be the RTX options. It's completely your preference whether you like RTX enough to have it on as it is going to cost you quite a bit of FPS. As for visibility, there's not going to be too much of a difference. So sitting comfortably at 170 FPS with the game looking absolutely fantastic, that's really good. Obviously from here you can crank down your graphics options or crank up the effectiveness of FSR or DLSS to get even more performance out of your game. But personally, this looks absolutely fantastic and this is probably where I'd leave it. Just to give you an idea of what FPS we were getting before, I'll pause the game, settings, video, and I'll crank it all the way up to epic, which was the default, or maybe just high. Setting it high, we're getting a solid 120, 130 FPS as we have DLSS enabled. If I set it back to DLAA for native resolution, it'll drop down to 60 or even 50. And we'll check out epic in just a second. All right, there we go. Settings, video, up to epic. And now we're setting a solid 110-ish FPS. Not bad. The only thing that didn't change, though, is the RTX option. So I'll set this to epic. And once again, not a huge drop in FPS. It's really well optimized in how that it's in how it's used. It's only used very sparingly, which keeps FPS very high compared to something like Cyberpunk's ray tracing options, which will absolutely tank your FPS, especially the fully path traced options, which is mainly just a tech demo at this point. Ray tracing does still have quite a way to go, but this game is really well optimized, pretty much out the box. But anyways, that's really about it for the super quick guide. Hopefully you found it useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.